Good morning. No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, you're welcome in this place. Welcome to Jacksonville First United Methodist Church as we're gathered here on the Lord's Day. For those of you joining us online, my name is Steve West, and you're here on May the 22nd, 2022, uh, which is for us Senior Sunday, a very special day in the life of the church. Thank you for being here. Welcome to this place. If today is your first time to come, we have a special welcome card and a connect card. We would love for you to pick up and take with you. One of the hospitality team can help you get that after the service. Thank you. You bless this congregation with your presence as part of it today. I want to remind everyone that there is an offering plate in the back. We typically do not pass it these days, but it is there for you after the service. And I remind everyone joining us online to give to your church wherever you regularly Go to church. Your church needs you during these times. Thank you for being here. And as we have during the season after Easter, Easter time or Easter tide, we open in the singing of our familiar Alleluia. So let us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
morning. Our opening psalm comes from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let but the peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let, Let the, the peoples, peoples praise you, O God. God. Let, Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May, May God, God continue, continue to bless us. us. Let, Let all the ends, ends of the earth revere him. Good morning. Let's all stand together now and look to our opening hymn to hymn 555. Hymn 555 is Forward Through the Ages. standing as we read um, the United Methodist Social Affirmation in our hymnals 886. We believe in God, creator of the world, and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We, we believe, believe God help our unbelief. unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, 
in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory, Glory be, be to God, God on high and, and on earth be peace. peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power and personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. The kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. a seat. And as we prepare our hearts for prayer, in light of the act of terrorism in New York last weekend, for our prayer focus this morning, I'd like to read this brief statement from the General Commission on Religion and Race of the United Methodist Church, and then let's enter into a time of prayer. The General Commission on Religion and Race is horrified and devastated by the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. The white supremacist shooter acted with a violent and racist agenda against the black community. This act of terrorism is a direct result of white supremacy and is unfortunately all too common in America. We grieve the victims of this senseless killing and stand in solidarity with the black community of Buffalo and the United States. All our church and community leaders must act to undo the work of racism that's deeply rooted in our society. We must take responsibility for this ongoing work. Every anti-racist action and conversation is a step in the right direction. So that'll be some of the focus of our prayer time today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, you created us in your image. And as we behold the beauty of God's creation during this time of year, the, the rolling breeze, the beautiful trees, the, the grass, the flowers, the bees, we just enjoy an even greater beauty that is placed in those you've created us, those of us you've created in your image, all of us created in your image, regardless of our race and tribe. In 1 John 4, the scripture says, those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. We ask forgiveness, not so much because we've lied per se. We're trying to love as Jesus loves, but... We ask forgiveness for turning a blind eye to hostility around us. Dear Jesus, help us live the love. Help us love one another. Teach us to love unconditionally. Teach us to know that through Jesus Christ we are one tribe, one race. We are one in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us first. May your grace enable us to love one another. Today we lift the names of those for whom we are praying and we lay them before you. Orin Babb, Anna Maria Barreto, 
Pat Brown, Bruce Cunningham, Susan Davis, Ralph Drake, Carol Green, Nancy Hall, Billy Hay, Nan Higginbotham, Jill Johnson, Bethany Lewis, and Jody Long, Philip McClelland, Vicki Milan, Claude Poissant, Andrew Sandberg, Jim Slayton, Janet Sprouse, Trip Weldon, Sandy West, Pat Williams, Taylor Woodrow, Susie Dempsey, and the people of Faith Temple and Jacksonville Christian Academy. We lift all these before you, asking for your healing blessings and your love to pour out on each and every one of these situations, for you know their need, and you knew it even before we asked today. We lift these things before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in whose name, in whose name we pray and we continue to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's all stand together once again this morning for our hymn verse and turn in our hymnals to hymn 507. Hymn 507 is through it all. John 14, 23 through 29 reads, Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Repeat after me. God be in my head. God be in my heart. God be in my body. God be in my words. You may have a seat and we will hear together the reading for today, which comes from the book of Acts. We're looking today at Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse 9. It's Paul's vision or Paul's visit to Philippi and the conversion of Lydia and the early church leaders there. During the night, this is verse 9 of chapter 16. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay in my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As often is the case, before I share the sermon, I just have a few pastoral words. I want to thank Annette Fagan for playing so beautifully for us today. I want to remind all of you that Tuesday is voting day. I know the, the primaries sneak up on us, and whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an Independent, it's an important civic responsibility. So I strongly encourage you to vote. That's the way we participate and work with and trust our system. We're all on the same team, so let's work together. I also have a very, uh, I'm very pleased to make a very special introduction today. I would like to introduce Jennifer Dobbins and her husband, Joshua, who are right here. You can stand Joshua if you want. Yeah, <laughs> don't leave her hanging. Jennifer is our new coordinator of Kids First Academy. She has been awarded that position. <laughs> And we welcome you both. You, Joshua, you can sit down now. We welcome you both. Uh, uh, you are part of God's family here in a special way. As you know, Kids First Academy is opening up in the fall after a long shutdown due to COVID and building restoration. And God has blessed us uh, with gifts and planning, and we're excited. She starts uh, her work at the end of this month, and we wanted to introduce her today so you can get to know her and welcome her following the service. Today is an even more in special day because we have seniors that we're recognizing today. We'll talk a little bit about Sarah and Reagan later in the service, uh, and we recognize you as our high school graduating seniors. But notice this insert. We have several people who are, um, who are graduating from college and graduate school. Uh, Brian Floyd, Joseph Francis... Aaron Leithram, and Reagan Stokesbury. And we want to recognize them for very, something really special going on in their lives as they take new uh, steps that are very important. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that Vacation Bible School is coming starting June 6th. There's a few things we need. First of all, we need your prayers. You know, this is the first time in three years due to... Have you heard of covid Okay, this is the first time in three years we've been able to have Vacation Bible School, and we are thrilled and we're excited about this. Second, to your prayers, we need volunteers. 
and you're invited to come to the Brownies and Bible School meeting today at 1 o'clock if you can. We will not be having safe sanctuary training quite yet, but the meeting is today to plan. We'd love to see you. Third, registration opens as of today, and there's a link on our website and on Facebook and in the Spark and by paper. You can register on paper the old-fashioned way as well. But registration starts today. Help us get the word out. And finally, there's a work day on Saturday. So please let Ms. Molly know if you can help and be a part of that. All those things I wanted to share uh, as we gather in Christ's name. We just read a wonderful scripture, a wonderful story about Paul and his companions who go to the, the city of Philippi in Macedonia because they were called by the Spirit. And Lydia a dealer in purple cloth, a worshiper of God. Her heart opened to hear God's word. I've entitled my message today, Open the Heart. What opens the heart? Some things open the mind more than they open the heart. Uh, it, and when I it, enjoy God's beautiful creation, it usually gets at my heart a little more than just expanding my mind. How many of you saw the lunar eclipse earlier this week? Did you, did you take the time? Some of you took the time uh, to stand outside, in my case, in the front yard and experience the glory of God's creation. I was reminded, it's a, it's, it touches a place of the heart because I was reminding as, as a child, my dad used to always sing this song to me as a little kid. I see the moon and the moon sees me. I don't know if you've ever heard that one. God bless the moon and God bless me. I see the moon and the moon sees me. God bless the moon and God bless me. And it touches my heart. And I, watching a lunar eclipse, Sandy and I walked outside. We were actually just taking an evening walk. We had forgotten about the lunar eclipse. And then we saw it and we just stood there uh, and watched it a while until that last sliver of light just held on, it seems like, endlessly, and the moon turned dark and kind of a dark red. We heard a kid across the street saying, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I'm reminded that we forget the mystery and the beauty of God's creation. It opens our mind, the expansiveness of the galaxy, but the, of the galaxy, but it opens the heart what opens your heart? What opens your heart? This story about Lydia is about the Lord opening somebody's heart. And I, I have three verses here, actually, I want to focus on that, that apply to the three key phrases I want to share today. And I believe that these three verses, if we really look at them, we really grapple with them, we really chew on them, we really, um, you know, digest them, they can change your life. The first key phrase is based on one of those key verses. And key phrase number one is this. The Holy Spirit doesn't get with the program. That's the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may not necessarily go along with your plans. The Holy Spirit doesn't get with the program. Notice the first verse that I'd like to focus on. On the Sabbath day, we, Paul and his companions, on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who gathered there. I can think of at least two ways the Holy Spirit was not getting with the normal program here. You may know that phrase, get with the program. It means to do what's expected, to... To, to adopt the prevailing viewpoint. Well, the prevailing viewpoint in their time, their, the prevailing viewpoint of religion was that you find God in the synagogue. So that since there's no synagogue in Philippi, there's no God. Okay? There's no God here. Philippi was near Greece. It was northwest of Turkey. It was a Roman colony. There were, it's famous for many things, gold mines, springs, a, 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 a historic and famous school of medicine. They had a gymnasium and a public bath. They had a library. They had a diverse population of Greeks and Romans. But they did not have a synagogue. Paul probably was surprised 
that the Holy Spirit told them to go there. They were not Jewish. There was no synagogue. There was a temple of Apollo, yes, but no synagogue. So they stayed there several days. And where does it say they went on the Sabbath? This is where your guesswork comes in. They, it says that they went to the river where they're supposed people gathered to pray. They didn't know. But they went and they found some women there. Now here's the second surprise that probably got to Paul. Um, in historic religion of Judaism, men were the ones who gathered for worship. Women gathered outside and were not a part of the same internal community. So when he went to this place of prayer, I bet he was expecting it to be the guys' club. But it was the women who had gathered there. Was he doubly surprised at what the Spirit was doing? And this is the foundational story, the DNA of the church in Philippi to whom he later wrote the book of Philippians. And there are three things that I've noticed that are fundamental to the early church that's gathered in Christ as we proclaim the, we continue to proclaim the resurrection during this Easter season. These incredible three things that the early church was empowered by because of the resurrection. First, they were, the, the first thing is they were empowered by the belief that Jesus is Lord and that foundational faith. Secondly, the resurrection and belief in the reality of the resurrection. And third, the busting of boundaries by the Holy Spirit. Jews and Gentiles, and even gender boundaries too. The Holy Spirit doesn't usually get with our program. The Holy Spirit does what the Spirit does. Now, those of you who are graduating seniors today, I want to encourage you not to pray that God gets with your program. Because life isn't going to take you exactly where you think it might go. I say go for it. But remember what Jesus told his disciples when they, he sent them out into mission. He said, don't take a money bag or an extra tunic. In other words, take a light load. Just carry a staff. Take a light load and trust me. Life is a journey that can be overplanned. Go for it because the Holy Spirit is going to take you somewhere. Be like Paul and follow the nudgings of the Spirit. Find your passion. Find your gift. Paul was willing to think outside the box, or in this case, to think outside the city gates and follow the work of God. Life is what happens when you're making other plans, they say. So I want to encourage our seniors to go with the flow and see where it goes. Follow your passions and follow your dreams, but don't be afraid to pivot. You may not find God where God's supposed to be. You may find God out by the river. So that's key phrase number one. The Holy Spirit doesn't usually get with the program. It moves the way God moves. The key phrase number two is this, and I love to say this, you've heard it before. The greatest adventure is the 18-inch journey from the head to the heart. I think that's the greatest adventure that all of us take in life. So we can learn from Lydia, who let this go to our heart. This is the next verse. I want to focus on a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thy Thyatira and a dealer in perfect cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly, what, eagerly to what was said by Paul. The Lord opened her heart. You know, I've become convinced that Easter reminds us that the resurrection is not just about Jesus being your personal Savior and going to heaven. The resurrection launched a movement of God that was going to break down walls and bust barriers. It's part of the DNA of the very fabric of our church. And God did this. This group of women were the founding leaders and Lydia, the founding pastor of a home church that became the church at Philippi. 
Some faith traditions quote Paul saying women should be silent in church. I believe that Paul was offering reasonable pastoral care for their times, not a blanket statement for all time. God was liberating women to fully participate against the grain of Jewish culture where women couldn't even be in the same room during worship. Paul, navigating culture, was sort of saying, you know, just kind of calm down. Don't rock the boat too much. We're doing so much already. It's clear God's mission is liberating for all kinds of people. Last week we preached, or I shared, on Peter's vision of the blanket that God brings down. And, and God says, what God has made clean, it may, you may no longer call unclean. And it was, God was talking about this barrier-busting opening to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. And a couple of weeks ago we talked about Tabitha, the first woman in the Bible who was called a disciple. This week, this is the first church founded by female leadership and Lydia as a pastor, busting the boundaries. But what I love the most about Lydia is it wasn't just in her head. She opened her heart. It didn't say she opened her mind. She opened her heart. Too much is stuck in our heads in American religion. We need to let it descend to the heart. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, I often say, taught that there's a balance in letting Scripture become part of us. We call it the quadrilateral. It's his teaching that, that, the, that Scripture's not just a mind game. It's not just uh, about reading the Bible and, and that settles it. The, we, we interpret it through tradition and reason and experience. Three very important gifts, human tradition, the intellect and the experience that we have with God. It's not just about reading Scripture, and it's not just about interpreting Scripture, it's about internalizing Scripture. So this was Lydia, the spiritual leader, who knew the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart, and she poured her heart into it. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to the words of Paul. The greatest adventures, the 18-inch journey from the head to the heart. And then finally, another, a third key phrase is this. As we look at these verses, conversation, conversion leads to ongoing conversation. Conversion leads to ongoing conversation. We have an ongoing conversation with God. It's not just about getting saved. It's about being saved made saved, being made whole. Acts 16 verse 15 says this, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Have you ever had a woman prevail upon you? Okay, I know, I know what that means. Her she prevailed upon them with her hospitality and grace. So first of all, you can't help but notice that she and her household were baptized. We don't know how many there were. We know there were at least more than one, a husband, children. She and her household were baptized. Those of us in denominations like ours that practice infant baptism see that the baptism of families and children started early because of her faith her family was baptized and grace came upon them. Lydia is mentioned in later passages in the scripture as pastor of a house church and opened up her home. It was highly relational ministry. They, didn't, they weren't settled with just meeting by the river for prayer. Because we serve a relational God who came to us in the relationship of Christ we are relational people, and there's something about the DNA church. It's more like a home than a public place. And I love Lydia and what she brings to the table. 
conversion leads to an ongoing conversation. And we need to always keep that alive. The, the fancy theological word for this is sanctification. It's growing in Christ. You're not just being converted to Christ. It's being made new in Christ. Christianity is about an ongoing conversation with God. God's not finished with us yet. Thanks be to God. I remember years ago um, when I was starting a new church that is now called Morningstar United Methodist Church in Chelsea, Alabama. We were meeting in a high school auditorium and with some hard work and sweat and a whole lot of Holy Spirit, we were able to purchase some property and we're getting ready to fundraise to build the first building. And I remember we went out, we made a, we made a prayer trail on the property to an outdoor chapel. And one day we had all the children in the church to make prayer cards, things they were praying for. And we laminated them and we put them on the trees along the trail. And I never will forget coming across one on that trail to what would eventually become a church building. And this one kid who I could still name for you today had written that his prayer was that we would become the church that God had already created us to be. How deeply theological that was, that we would become the church God had already created us to be. I want you to know that you, we are always becoming what God created us to be. I want all the seniors in here to know that not just both high school seniors, but there's other families here with, with graduating seniors, that you're always becoming what God has already created you to be. I'd like to close my message with this because making the rounds on the internet has been a video highlights of a Catholic University graduation speech by Abby Wambuck, Olympic gold medalist in soccer. And she closed with these words. The world out there is big. Sometimes when I watch the news, it all just feels too big, too broken. Too far gone. It's hard to know where to start. For God's sake, don't spend your life watching the news. It's all bad news. Instead, be the news. In fact, you're supposed to be the good news, right? The good news I have for you today, she said, is that there are worlds out there waiting to be forever changed by you. Go forth and make a new world by doing unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So as we ponder Lydia and the way she leads us to a barrier-breaking way of the heart, an ongoing conversation with God, go and be the news in this world that's hurting for good news. In Jesus' holy name, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, be with us as we recognize our seniors today, as we invite them to, and all of us, to a reception in their honor, as we think on new beginnings and new blessings. And we thank you for the new beginning, the new blessing of Lydia and the church at Philippi that started with these women joining together at a place of prayer by the river one day and opening their hearts. Be with us in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Shelby, she and Jessica. All right, good morning. Um, <clears throat> I'm Shelby Dickey, and I've been working um, with our youth this year and got to know Reagan and Sarah a little bit. And... Um, I was talking to Connie earlier in the week about graduation speeches and the things we say to our kids, and um, we were talking about, you know, buying the, oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss, which is fantastic. I've given it as a graduation present many times, um, and given them all these speeches about all the hope and the dreams, and, and there's all of those things. I don't want to be the, the person that Shelby got up there and talked about a lot of negativity and um, there's a lot of great things and we're excited and I can't wait to talk to you more about them but one thing I wanted to talk to you about um, just 
for just a minute is um, there's this idea, and this is for everybody, whether you graduated 1970 or 2022, we all are still trying to figure out what road it is we need to take. I think that's kind of an ongoing thing. Um, what do we need to do? What's next? What do I do in this situation? Like, what is this outcome going to be? Um, we're always kind of looking for what do we do next and how do I handle this? Um, I have the Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken Up on My Wall, and I was reading it this morning. And we're always thinking about, did we do the right thing? Did we take the right road? Have we been on the correct journey? And I think it kind of takes a lot of our time um, thinking about those things. I'm still there trying to figure out what road is next. Um, so really what I want to encourage you with is if all of us, no matter when you graduated, whether it's this year or not, um, sometimes can we take a moment to put the idea of what road do we need to take down and stop for a minute and just remember um, one of the things that Christ says, uh, God says over and over through the scripture is that his mercy is enough for us and that his mercies are new every morning. And one of the scriptures that's helped me the most in my life when the road didn't look right, when things were messy and they didn't go as planned because they won't always go as planned. I think we all know that. Um, one of the scriptures that helped me the most was in Lamentations. And if you read Lamentations, it's Jeremiah's brokenness. It's lamenting of his brokenness. Um, but in the middle of the scripture, he reminds us that he calls to mind his hope in the Lord. And um, it says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, and they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And if you remember, from everything you do from this point, your steps are your own. But each morning you get to wake up and know that God's mercy is enough for today. No matter what happened yesterday, right? His mercies are new. And it also says that God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness is enough. But we often don't see it until we step out in his mercy. When we let him help us. Because a lot of times we want to do everything ourselves. We don't ask for help when we need it. Ask for help and look to God and let his mercy be enough. And let it be new. Um, let it carry you through to the next day and the next day and the next day after that. It doesn't have to look perfect each week. You're not going to, your first week of college might be great. The second week of college might be the worst of your life. You just never know. And you can call me if it's in that situation and I'll drive to Troy and we'll have a burger or something. Um, but just to remember um, that you don't have to have it all figured out. And I know you know that. But um, to remember that his grace is sufficient. And he doesn't, it's not just said that in the scripture because it sounds nice. It, it says it for us to remember in our brokenness. Um, so just remember that. And um, after today and you come to their reception and you hug them and tell them how great they've done, don't forget them in a year or in two years or in five years. When they're sitting on the floor with their toddler in 20 years because there's Cheerios everywhere. Or when they've lost their job and just it just doesn't look the way they thought it would. Don't forget them in this moment. It doesn't stop with the reception, right? Until our last breath, we serve, we love, we give to the people around us. And that includes our children, our teenagers, right? So encourage them, send them notes, call them, and tell them you love them. Because they're going to do really great things, right? All right. I'm going to let Jessica come up and close us in prayer. And while Jessica comes, I want to invite the two high school seniors, if you'll come join me down here. Sorry. Let us pray. Great teacher, guide us all as students of life lived in faith. Since before written word, you have walked with us in our struggles and in our celebrations. It was you bursting old wineskins with new wine on the mount. It was you feeding the multitudes with your words on the plain. It is you who are the light that has passed from generation to generation in the journey of life. It is you walking with these graduates as we bless them in your name. Continue to walk with them as we send them into the world with blessings. Send your hand toward the two of these. May God's bright flame from the lamp of knowledge guide you. May God's warm glow off the pages of this book of wisdom comfort you. May the cool baptismal waters of God continue to refresh you in your endings and new beginnings. May your soul always be fed at Christ's table. 
May your heart always be open in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and may your mind be transformed in the mighty presence of the great I Am. God is with, with you. you. God, God is, is with, with us. us. Go, Go with, with God. God. Amen. Congratulations, Reagan. Sarah, congratulations. Both of you at Troy, I hear. Don't tell all our JSU fans. <laughs> but that's great. I'm excited for both of you. And we look forward to seeing you in the reception. Everybody's invited. Go in God's peace. We're closing in our closing hymn today uh, and the reception afterwards. You're welcome to come by and visit with these two families as well as see their beautiful tables that are out there celebrating their life to, together. Our closing hymn is number 128, He Leadeth Me. And as always, if for any reason you feel led to come forward, you're welcome to come. This altar is always open to whatever God is doing in our lives. Let's stand together. Let's sing together. God's peace and may God go with you always. May the Holy Spirit encourage you, strengthen you, comfort you, challenge you, and take you to new places in God's holy name and in God's peace. Amen.